Welcome to the Winds of Jupiter. Sixteen was a year of completion. I know many, including myself, who will be happy to leave 2016 in the dust. 2017 is the year of endings and new beginnings. I dreamt the other night for you to follow where Pluto, the planet of transformation and endings and beginnings, is in your chart with respect to the other planets, which makes sense since 2017 is a year of endings and new beginnings. Mars is direct all of 2017, so energy from the warrior planet shouldn't be an issue. As we go into 2017, Mercury will be retrograde until January 8th. This is a hangover time from New Year's and perhaps it's best to defer your New Year's resolutions until the 8th of January when all the planets will be direct until February 6th. This definitely is an auspicious time. However, 2017 is not a year of immediate gratification. Work hard and stay cool and collected and rewards will come to you. It's like or as if I hear the tumblers of a safe slowly clicking into place. When the safe is finally open, you will receive what you deserve. 2017 is a prelude to the up and coming stellar year of 2018. Before we get started, I'd like to explain my unique tarot spread that I put together so you have a more fulfilling experience in your readings. The seven core cards depict the seven chakra energy points of the body. The three cards on the left depict the bottom part of the body, the spine, the pelvic, the solar plexus, the center is the heart, to the right is the throat, the third eye, and the crown. They all have their own place in what you're doing in your life, but this is the unconscious inner self versus the conscious for self on the right side. We've all done things in our lives that we're guilty of that we all of a sudden say, why did I do that and why did I say that? I believe there's a massive disconnect between our unconscious self and our conscious self and the actions that we bring out into the outer world. The lower right hand card is the base of the spine. This is a combination of who you are from past lives to childhood traumas to childhood cherished memories to today. We're ever evolving all the time and that's why I call it sourcing and urgings instead of foundation. The second card up, the, the pelvic or the sacrum depicts actually emotional and spiritual growth or growth of any kind and, and also sexual prowess and how you think about all this in your unconscious mind and how it comes out into the world. I call this the awakening or the arousing for growth, but it's more on a cosmic level because the cosmos has natural laws that are in harmony. But then we go up here to the solar plexus, which actually they call the navel, 
as well. And we're dealing with something completely different because this is a universal life force that you're thinking about. And it's more of feeling and sensing is what I call it. And you're erupting into an awakening close to your subconscious. The central card, as I had mentioned, is the heart of the matter or the situation. You're concerning. You're caring and concerning and loving, but you have questions and you want them answered. The bottom right is the throat, and I call this the, the communicating and teaching. But actually, we should be listening as much as we communicate. This is where you, you make your moral values, your ethical moral values. This is where you change as you're going in into a, a society and how you feel about it. The second card up is called seeing or visualizing. It's the third eye in chakra. Something close to enlightenment and putting things into perspective. And the crowning card on the top right, I consider knowing and understanding. But knowing is one thing. But if you can't apply it to, to wise actions, it's not wisdom. When I'm done with that, I would be putting the card on the left side that will represent your past. I'll be putting a card on the right side that represents your future. And then I will be using the bottom of the card of the deck as more of the energy of the reading. And it could be the outcome, but we really don't know. And at the end of that, we will be putting one of Doreen Virtue's angel cards out to see what's up for 2017. I'll be using the Conley Tarot deck for the, all the readings. It's new to me. I have a new channel. We have a new year. And I, I decided that it was time to buy a new deck of cards, and actually I really like them. So onward with the readings. Hi there, Sagittarius. Let's see what you have in store for the year 2017. Here at the base of your spine, your sourcing and urgings is the Knight of Pentacles, a slow-moving knight that meticulously accumulates things as he goes along. He rules Pentacles for money, but actually I sense here that he's actually accumulating more than that in his lifetime. And it's been health and happiness and love. So it's a well-balanced card for this position. As a surprise, I have a clarification card underneath each, each of the seven chakra energy points. And here you have the three of wands, the futuristic man. He's looking forward to moving ahead and changing things. So here, it's a very well-balanced base of the spine for you. Here you have the Queen of Cups in the Awakening and the Arousing Chakra Energy Point, which is a very appropriate card for, for this particular category. The Queen of Cups, the intuitive woman that oversees emotions and love. This also indicates that this is well you're well balanced here with your awakening. Let's see what's underneath it, the clear for her clarification. Oh, and there you have the Seven of Pentacles. The Almost to Harvest card. Your hard work is starting to pay off. And a harvest is coming in, so here it appears you're waiting for something. You're at bay. Something yet hasn't come to fruition. Up here, you see that the Hierophant is overseeing the feelings and sensings. This is an interesting place for this card. Typically, he oversees Orthodox religions, institutions, 
like-minded groups. He can bring warnings and, and blessings. But then again, when this card pops up, particularly in this position, he's, he's sensing something with his gut feelings. And in essence, the Hierophant is looking for an answer. He's looking for a truth. And he's seeking something. Let's see what kind of clarification card we have underneath here. Oh, you've got the Ace of Cups. Oh, the first word in my mind when I saw the, this, when it came up, was agape. Unconditional, universal love. Seeking some type of truth that has to do with emotions. Here in the center of the heart, of the matter, the heart of the situation. We have seven of cups. It can be a splayed energy, but then again, it can be, um, it's, a, it's about choice. You know, you can choose your poisons. Here, it's both. He's, he's wanting, he's not, it's vague to him what he's feeling. He's, he's not sure what to choose and what's appropriate at this time. Let's see what's going on with the clarification card underneath. You have the fool. So here, the fool is willing to go on a journey to discover which cup is appropriate for him. The spirit is, the fool is the spirit of life, the spirit of breath. He's willing to risk to, for discovery. What's interesting about the fool is that he's not only at the edge of precipitous and actually is willing to risk, but also notice how he's arching his back and all seven of the chakra energy points are exposed to the cosmos. I always found that very interesting. Here under the teachings and, list and communicating is the star. Somewhere there's a guiding message that's going to be communicated to you through some guardian angels or some guardians or but you have to really be vigilant to hear or see the the signs as you're going along that you might think was a mere coincidence actually was the message and you might miss it if, if you're going too fast and not looking for them. There is going to be some kind of communications that'll click in your mind. Let's see what kind of clarification card we have temperance. So you have to actually moderate yourself and temper yourself in order to, to, to receive this message. Here we have the third eye, <clears throat> which is also considered seeing and visioning things and putting it in perspective. And you actually know that you're going to have to work hard. The Ten of Wands is a heavy load. Something else is going on though there's this might be something minor and two different things are happening here and you're seeking truth is more major than this small minor aspect to it here the clarification card is the three of cups so there will be after all your hard work some warranted celebration some type of success that you feel like you you hit a cornerstone here, the crowning card of the reading, which is knowing and understanding, is the hermit. You understand that everything is rather vague and you haven't made any decisions yet. And it's time for you to sit back and really seek your inner self for enlightenment so you can make the appropriate decision. Here, a clarification under it is, oh, the tower. There we go. When you do... Find your enlightenment. It's, it's going to be rather quickly and like a lightning bolt coming down. It's like, why didn't I think of that before? Why didn't I see that? Why didn't I know that? And then getting to it, why didn't I understand that? So far, this is a really interesting, interesting spread. Really, a lot of major arcana cards have shown up here. Now here I'm going to put the past card on the left side. This is your past. And he's depicted by the chariot, the man of success and movement. So in your past, it appears that you've been very competent. 
in the path. You've been very sure-footed in your path as you go on up to the present. I find there's a lot of confidence in this left side of the of the reading that within yourself you really understand what's going on. Somewhere in your subconscious to your conscious, though, there's some truths that aren't coming forward. This probably has something to do with the, the Hierophant and the Ace of, of Cups, is that in this day and age, institutions and orthodox religions have failed people. People are going back to the basics and, and wanting to remember what right and wrong was and what truth really is, because we're not seeing it now. And I think in 2017, you might find some truth that you've been seeking, or truth really depends on, on what you're asking and what you're concerned about. For your your future card, you've got the world saying, you've completed, you're going to completion somewhere, you will finally understand what you're seeking. The bottom of the deck card is the Two of Swords. Once again, we're back to where there's decision making. This comes back into the Seven of Cups. The overall energy of, of this reading is some type of decision. Which is quite interesting because that's pretty much what this has all been about. Okay, now we're going to do a, a Doreen Virtue card, and it's Astra Terra. Astra. <laughs> you deserve the best. Reach for the stars with your dreams and desires, and don't compromise. Tara, the, the name or the word Tara actually means star. And here we're back here with the, with the guiding star that was going to help you with a message. So evidently here, this actually meshes really well with with that, the whole reading, I would be vigilant and see what the message is and don't, don't dismiss things that you think were just coincidences because I believe they're, I don't believe in coincidences. Thing ha things happen for a reason. You're being guided somewhere. You're being taught through guardians. This was an excellent reading, but when you look at it, there really wasn't any element that overrode anything. You've got a couple of wands. If anything, cups were most prevalent. But actually, what commanded this reading was the major arcana cards. And that's telling you that whatever truth or truth that you find, it's going to affect you for a long term, for long term, period. I think this was an excellent reading. You have a lot to look forward to and have a great year, Sagittarius, for 2017.